So I wanted to start by talking to you a little bit about social mobilization. UNICEF has put a tremendous effort into social mobilization around polio, but I really wanted to you know, ask a little bit about that work and really how can that work that you've done be used for other diseases and for other challenges that UNICEF is trying to tackle? No, it's absolutely crucial. Uh, and we did it, I don't mean we, UNICEF, I mean all of us in this great partnership, uh, did it community by community by community in India, millions of people going out into the communities, community health workers, and making a huge difference because they knew the communities. In the Ebola crisis, we began with nationwide campaigns telling people about unsafe burial practices, etc. And we were quickly reminded that you have to do it community by community, and you have to understand the structures in each community so you can get to the traditional leaders, the religious leaders, in the case of Ebola, the secret societies that were doing the burials, et cetera. So I, I know that UNICEF has made a lot of investments in innovation. You know, you guys have folks who are working out in San Francisco, a hub in Nairobi, a uh, team here, right? Oh, it's really yeah. exciting work. Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to ask sort of what's next with innovation and what sort of partners do you need and what do you need from the folks you're working with to sort of push forward that next step? Well, one thing we need and we're doing, but we want to do more and more, is to work with others not to get the money to do it, but to keep trading ideas and then taking existing technologies and adapting them to community action and to the kinds of things that we need to do, which means working not just on how you can adapt the cell phone, which is right now helping us on in Pakistan and Afghanistan in uh, helping to track uh, cases in the far to reach, uh, community, hard to reach communities, uh, but also then, uh, and I'm very, very interested in this, in getting the manufacturers and those who are <coughs> uh, putting together the programming on the cell phones so that we don't have to put the apps in ourselves, but they'll be start putting the apps in because it's helping them then expand their own cell phone uh, coverage in these in the, uh, countries. I know this is a really interesting period with the SDGs having been adopted. We're getting ready for them to take into effect, you know, January 1. What, what is that going to mean for UNICEF? What changes can people expect? How are you sort of working um, within and across your teams to, to tackle these issues? And what, what, what will people see? Well, I think the great thing about the SDGs is not only that they're offering now all the targets and the indicators and they're giving governments goals to work towards, but with the tremendous expression of political will that we saw in the General Assembly and providing something that is in very short supply in the world, and that's hope, and a vision of what the world could look like in 2030. So for us, it's a great opportunity, and we're already doing it. We're not waiting for January 1st to go in with governments and to say, we want to help you put together your goals, we want to help you with your programs, and also to work all the more with NGOs around the world, both international NGOs and local NGOs, to say, let's come together and UNICEF will join with you, We're not trying to tell you what to do, but join with you in movements that can both help governments work in the communities, in the tough communities where we have to go, but also hold governments accountable then for meeting the commitments they made in September at that wonderful moment uh, in New York.